Hello, and welcome to Counting Like It's 1479, where I talk about double entry bookkeeping and using technology to help you do it, and also mystify those of you who were here to see the next chapter in the NAND to Tetris class. Today, I want to look at a lesser known piece of software that's actually been around for quite a while now. It's called Manager. It's at the URL manager.io. It's made by an Australian developer, and it's been in development for quite a long time, at least since 2017, possibly earlier. Development is active and new features roll out with an impressive cadence. So Manager comes in a few flavors. There's a desktop edition for single users that's free to use and a cloud edition for a modest monthly or yearly fee if you need multi-user support. There's also a server edition if you want to self-host. And let me get this out of the way. This is not a paid endorsement. They're not a sponsor. I just discovered this and used it a bit in the past couple Couple weeks and wanted to share it with you. So let's take a quick look at the app and we will be using our example bookkeeper, Alice. Remember Alice from way back in our GNU Cache episodes and our Ledger episodes. So we're going to create a new business here. Uh, Manager is focused at businesses, but you can use it for personal finance. That's how I've been evaluating it. So we're just going to call our business Alice. Right off the bat, we see that the interface is nice and clean. There's almost nothing in it. This is because Manager goes out of its way to hide what you don't need. And you're gonna turn on the features you need from this Customize tab. Very helpful red arrow pointing at it. Now, if you wanna use Manager just as a general journal, you can do that. Uh, your journal entries go here. This looks very much like, say, QuickBooks or even GNU Cache to a lesser extent. You can go right here to the settings. There's a setting here for chart of accounts. You could create a bank account right here and just use the journal and it'll work almost exactly like what you would expect it to be. Where Manager gets interesting is that it gives us different ways to do this too. And those different ways are actually pretty different. So let's go to this customized tab that has the big arrow. So what we see is that Manager has a huge number of features, they call them tabs, to deal with specific business activities from bank accounts, expenses, keeping track of your clients, sales invoices, purchase orders, inventory, payroll, and you can turn on only the features you need. So the fact that it allows you to do this makes it very usable for personal finance. I don't have payroll. I'm never going to turn on the employees tab. Since Alice's financial life is pretty simple for now, let's just turn on these bank tabs and see what happens. All right. So now we have these new tabs right up top here, bank and cash accounts, receipts, payments, and enter account transfers and reconciliations. So let's go ahead and create some accounts for Alice. We'll recall she had a checking account. Checking account, we'll create a savings account too. Well, now that we have that, I actually do need a couple of more uh, accounts in our chart of accounts. And I wanna come back to this control accounts later, but let's see. Now we can see a new asset has appeared. We didn't have to create it. It's cash at bank. So let's go ahead and create a uh, income account for Alice's salary. We'll classify that as income. Uh, let's go ahead and create a rent account. I didn't see one there. Hopefully it's not a duplicate. If it is, I guess we learn how to delete accounts. Let's go ahead and create a groceries account too. Okay, income, there's salary. Oh, there was a rent account. Well, let's delete it. We'll go here, edit, delete. Very straightforward, not hard to do at all. All right, so I believe our first transaction that Alice had was paying rent out of her checking account. So let's go see how that looks. Let's go to the journal entries here, create a new journal entry. She's going to pay rent. It's going to be on January 1st. And of course, we're just going to type 
our bank account in here, checking, right? Hey, what's going on? Why isn't the checking account here? Well, I told you that manager gets interesting, and this is why. Because we have enabled those bank features, and because we created the checking account with those bank features, that account is invisible to the journal. It's not actually invisible to your, to your journal. It's invisible to this journal entry UI. Well, why would you do that? Well, let's take a look. We're going to go here to bank and cash accounts. We have these tabs here for receipts and payments. So rent is obviously a payment. Let's go ahead and click on that. It's a new payment. We're going to give it a date. Paid from, well, it's paid from Alice's checking account. There we go. Who is the payer? Evil Landlord Inc. And the description is rent. So is the account going to be here? Well, we don't need the account. We, we're, we're doing it from right here, right? We said paid from account. So the, this tab knows about the bank accounts. Now I said that the journal did still see it. These things are going into a journal. You could actually back into uh, creating complex journal entries by using this interface here and creating splits. But in this case, we don't have to do that. We're gonna do rent. And of course, Alice has the impossibly cheap rent of $300 in San Francisco. We get a little receipt. If we got an invoice, we could attach it here. Uh, so we have some record of it. And Alice could set a logo so she has it here. Let's go back. Oops, and now we can see we have a negative balance. And that's because we forgot to say how much Alice had when she started. So I believe what we want to do is go here and say that our books are starting from a certain date. In this case, they're going to start from the day before our first entry. Now, if we go to edit our bank account, we can see that we have this starting balance field. And we'll just enter that in. Our savings account, I believe, had $5,000. Now, if we go to our summary, we could see that it figured out that this was money we already had. It put it in the category retained earnings. You can rename these uh, fields or create your own if you want. But for right now, I'm not going to worry about that. And you can see that now our balances are OK. Um, another interesting thing here about this payment is you do have this field here for whether or not it's cleared or pending, uh, which can be very useful if you hand someone a check. You want to keep track that that check has not actually cleared yet. You can do that via this UI. So why does the app go out of its way to create this receipts and payments rather than just letting us use a journal. Well, there seem to be two motivations for it. First, they want to provide a simpler UI. Uh, when you sit someone down in front of a journal, you always have this question of what's a debit, what's a credit, which account is increasing, which account is decreasing. And this just takes that away. You, everyone knows that a receipt is something that's coming into your bank account and a payment is something that's going out. The other thing that's not clear here in the single user app, which I'm demoing, is that if you're using the cloud edition or the server edition, you can have multiple users and you can give different access levels to those users. So that opens up the possibility of giving different users different privileges. So for example, maybe the person working your registers only has access to receipts, but not payments. And maybe the person paying your purchase orders only has access to payments and not receipts. So I, I think that's kind of interesting. So what else can we do here? Well, I think we had an example of, uh, we can do a receipt next. Alice gets paid on February 7th. And She's paid by Bigco. It's received in her checking account. You could either type or use the mouse here. What account? Well, it's coming in the salary account. We said that Alice gets $1,000, but only 200 of it goes, oh, excuse me, only 800 of it goes to her checking account because she has to pay her taxes. And I, oh, tax payable, there we go. 
So again, $1,000 in, 200 out, 800 balance. Let's go ahead and create this. We'll say it's cleared. There's our receipt. And we could see all the receipts right now. There's only the one right here. And we could see that that's reflected on our bank balance. So it's pretty cool. The other thing that's interesting here, oops, I meant to go to the settings tab, not the customize tab, is they have this idea of control accounts. And these let you group accounts in interesting ways. So for example, suppose Alice has a credit card. We could go and, and just create um, credit card accounts under liability in our chart of accounts, just like before. Um, in doing that, you end up seeing that, that uh, issue where you want to move money back and forth frequently between your bank account and your checking account. So the, the theory of the app is that any account that is not under your direct control is a bank account or in some sense. If someone else tells you what the balance is, it's a bank account. So a credit card is kind of a bank account. It's just a bank account that normally has a negative balance. So we could go and we could create a bank account here and say, oh, this is my credit card. But that feels kind of weird. It'll show up in the bank list and, and you know, the terminology isn't right. So what we can do to kind of make that a little more right is we can go here and we can create a new control account for our bank accounts. We're going to call it credit cards and I'm not going to give it a code. But a credit card account, of course, is not an asset. It's a liability. So in this group pull down, we'll call it a liability. Now let's go to our summary. We can see here credit cards is just shown up under liabilities. There's nothing in it because we haven't created an account yet. So we're going to create a new account here. Uh, let's call it uh, Bank of Latveria. How about that? And uh, we'll say her credit limit is a nice $10,000. Now, notice that this, this pop-up account for the control, the pop-up control for the control accounts was not here before. But because we enabled control accounts, it appears. And this is very much something that manager does a lot, that the controls are hidden until you actually need them. So I'm going to go ahead and say, yes, this is part of a control account. We'll say there's no balance. We'll go ahead and create it. And now we can say that Alice went to um, Safeway on, let's say, February 14th. And these dates and values I'm using are pretty much exactly what I used in the GNU Cash tutorial. So if you're confused, feel free to go back and compare what we're doing here to what we're doing there. Okay, it's going to Bank of Latveria or it's being paid from the Bank of Latveria, excuse me. Uh, the pay is Safeway. And I think she had a big week, $250 of groceries. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and create that. And we could see here that our balance it knows since this is a liability account and it was a payment, but that balance needs to go negative, which in fact it did. The next thing that Alice did was she paid her credit card. Well, clearly that's going to be a payment, right? So let's go here, new payment account, Bank of Latveria. Hey, it's not there. What's going on? Well, the Bank of Latveria is not a vendor. They're a bank. They're an account that you have. And so we use this enter account transfers tab. Again, the app is trying to make things as specific as possible to reduce the chances that you make mistakes. It's a little weird. I gotta say, I was very uncomfortable with this for about a day maybe. 
<laughs> I think that that's about how long it lasted. I was kind of like, I don't know if I like this. This seems kind of uh, odd and very hyper specific. And then after maybe a day, maybe two days, I feel like I've drunk the crew, the Kool Aid, and uh, I quite like it now. Pay credit card is coming out of her checking account. It's going into the Bank of Latveria, and it is two hundred and fifty dollars. And so you have this very natural way of saying, well, what did I get this month? There's all my receipts. What did I pay this month? There's my payments. When did I move money around? There's me moving money around. And our balance sheet, of course, is maintained the entire. Oh, so this is interesting. So we see we still have this liability here of $250. And that's because I did not notice when I did this transfer that the default for state for a transfer is pending. Uh, you can change that. I just didn't do it in, in this setup. Well, let's go ahead and say it cleared, and we'll say it cleared. Uh, oh, because the payment, I muffed on the payment date and did 2021. And I did the account transfer in 2020. Well, that was silly of me. Let's see that. Okay, now we see exactly what we expected to see. So. This is Manager. There's a lot more to talk about in this program. Uh, the one thing for personal finance that Manager is missing uh, currently is an investment module. It's really made for businesses. Most businesses are not holding trading securities. I have heard through the grapevine that they are, in fact, working on an investment module. Uh, I don't know when or when that'll come out or how good it will be. I've actually um, created a couple of workflows within Manager to track investments using the Inventory tab, which, like everything else, you can just go ahead and enable that tab, and suddenly you have new features in your program. But I feel like it's unfair to show those workflows given that they're working on an actual investment module. If and when they create an investment tracking feature for the app, I will probably come back and show it again. So that is Manager. The URL, as I said before, is manager.io. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. This has been Counting Like It's 1479.